there's a lot of live food you can give to your fry. There's brine shrimp, there's daphnia. One of the things that I like to use are vinegar eels. Vinegar eels are freshwater creatures, and if you've got a natural remedies store, one of those places that sells herbal stuff as if it's medicine, you can very frequently find vinegar that somebody has made and they're selling locally and it'll have these things in it. It gives you a good starter culture. If you can't find something like that, you can buy a starter culture of these on eBay for not very much money. But I'm going to go ahead and show you these, show you how to harvest them. I like these a lot because while they're not as big as brine shrimp, they're not as good as brine shrimp. You know, if you've got that weird intermediate period with your, with your fry where they've got a little bit of egg sac left, not a whole lot, but you're not really sure if they're going to be able to eat or not, you can add these to the tank, they won't die, they won't interfere with your fry, and as your fry develop, the ones that can eat early on will get to eat. You have less early fry starvation this way until everything's to the point where you can switch to a larger food. All of the stuff that's floating in here are vinegar eels. Culturing these is pretty easy. So to cultivate vinegar eels, you're going to need four things clean water, some bits of apple, apple cider vinegar, and some place that you already have an existing culture. So I've got 300 milliliters of water here. I'm going to do a 50-50 mix. I'm going to go ahead and bump this up to 600. There we go. Toss in our apple bits. Top off with culture and we're good to go. You can poke holes in a lid, you can not poke holes in a lid. Doesn't seem to make a huge difference. Take it off once in a while so it gets some fresh air in there. So you've got your culture and you want to harvest them. What now? There's a couple different ways. The first one is if you want them immediately and that is a coffee filter. Now a coffee filter has large enough holes that a lot of these will actually swim through it. So you want to make sure that you have something that you can catch the excess in and put it back into your jar because there will be a lot of them that are left when you're done. Okay, that should be several thousand of them. After this drains, you want to give it a rinse with some clean water. But you want to make sure that you don't have a lot of this vinegar left in here when you're done. So I've got fresh water here. And this does result in your wastewater that you're going to be putting back being much lower vinegar content than you normally have. So what I like to do is just every once in a while I'll go ahead and top it off with vinegar again. So that's more the color I like it to be. You can see there's some dead bugs and things floating in here because this is one that I just leave the top off all the time. It doesn't really affect anything at all. Part of why I make new cultures is eventually the old culture just gets so gross that I just want to throw it away. So this is dripped pretty clean. You're going to take your coffee filter, just reverse it into your fresh water. That's it. You should be able to see in here, if I can get this to focus, you should be able to see, there it is, down at the bottom. All of those floating around are vinegar eels. You can see them swimming in the water now. So once you've got them separated into some fresh water, they're safe to give to your fry. The second method requires that you have something narrow. You can use a test tube, you can use one of the testers that come with the API kits or the like. Uh, what I did is I got one of these long neck volumetric flasks. This was something that a friend left here, but you can pick them up on Amazon or eBay for three or four dollars usually. And what you're going to do with this is you're going to fill it up to the base with your vinegar eel solution. You're going to stuff a cotton ball in you and put fresh water on top. And the cotton ball stops the fluid exchange here, but the vinegar eels will still swim through it because they're looking to get open air so that they can breathe. So I've got this filled to where I want it to be. I'm going to take a cotton ball, I tore it in half. I'm just going to 
stuff it down in here. Now these are very absorbent and I don't want air pockets, so I'm going to add some water to this first. You don't want to do this before you add it to your tube because it will just fall at that point when you squish it, it won't rebound. You push it just until it makes contact with the fluid. You're gonna add some more fresh water on top. And this will give you something which is harvestable for a couple of days. What I usually do, just to be on the safe side, is I will do two layers of cotton. And what happens is, while the vinegar eels don't need a whole lot of air, they do need some. They do go to the surface to breathe. So they will swim through the cotton, through the cotton, to get to the air up at the top. You may be able to see there are a couple that have already come through. There's one right in the middle of the screen, swimming up to the top to get itself some air. They, they don't really swim in the direction, they just sort of randomly go, but they swim in an upward motion. So eventually they make it up. So when you come back in four or five hours, there will be a fair amount of them up at the top. Tomorrow morning, there will be tens of thousands of them that I can just harvest with a pipette or an eyedropper or whatever you want to use. Just make sure you don't try to pour it because that will mix up the liquid. But uh, I'm gonna give this a little bit of time. We'll come back and I'll show you how easy this is to harvest. I let this sit overnight. I got distracted by something, so I can't really show you the progress in a couple hours. But you can see here, the number of these things that are up at the top in what is essentially fresh water. There are tens of thousands of them. The water is almost milky. This is my preferred method of harvesting them. It takes a little bit more planning, but you get a much better yield than you do with the coffee filter method.